Welcome to the Quick Stop F1 podcast. My name is Nyasha, and you could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us. We appreciate that. Joining me today is one of your favorite guests, one of my favorite guests, all the way. I want to say Georgia. It's Georgia, right? That's right. That's yes, right. I knew That's it. Right. All right. the way That's from right. Georgia. That's and right. look, we've got the US Grand right. Prix coming up. So it's only right. Yeah. It's only yeah. right that we talk to a man like Jay from Wolfpack Performance. How are you? Man, bro, I'm doing awesome. Yeah. Doing awesome, bro. It could be worse, could be better, but here you've got to be glad about what we have, bro. That is it. Gratitude Facts. is a must. I Facts. um I realized that recently. I've had I've been on a journey. Oh. Been on a journey. I was a bit like, sick, uh-huh. and then I was a bit tired, and okay. I was sat in bed, and I was like, you know what, yeah, yeah. We'll get to this later, but we're lucky to do what we do, yeah, and oh, to really- have an audience. You know, like for us to be able to make what we make, I see your audience over there making it rain like it's Magic City over there. Uh, You know, I see us, our audience, buying merch, supporting the thing. We're very privileged to be in this position, right? So it's only, it's anyway. So um, thank you for mentioning that because I feel the same, but it's not about my gratitude. Or Jay's gratitude is about you guys at home. Maybe just showing us a little gratitude. Give us a like and a subscribe on the video. Uh, give us a, a rating on Spotify. We reached over 300 now. We're trying to push towards 500 ratings on Spotify, which is incredible. So if you're listening on Spotify, just give us a little five star rating. And if you're on Apple, nice. we are really, really blessed with all of the reviews you guys left i had a read of the reviews and i got emotional because you guys really are giving us our flowers we appreciate that so leave us and if you like what you're watching leave us a comment below um jay what's up we are literally a week on is it a week it's a week on from the fia's Hmm. announcement that right. red bull uh did a minor breach of the cost cap correct so let's talk about that because today before i get into that actually i haven't spoken to you about it what are your thoughts on let's just start with the fact now and it's not we're not talking about i know there were some people that were saying we need to wait for the uh report to come out we you know all of this is conjecture it's all rumors it's now fact there was a minor breach so we know that's up to seven million dollars right your thoughts on red bull's minor breach in the words of the fia of of the cost cap and i guess what that does for the sport itself uh now what it does for the sport is is really strongly going to depend on what the fia does or what they don't do Mm. and what they're doing right now is already not looking good right we everybody i don't have to play it i was gonna play it but i don't want to put my boy nashi in you know he got to clear that with people i don't want to put his (laughs) content in copyright jail so Mm. we all heard ross Braun say if yes. a team is found to fraudulently breach the cost cap, they're going to lose championships. All right. He didn't say if they found a minor breach or major breach, which really I think the whole minor and major need to be done away with. It needs to just be a breach period. I, and I also think that that was being proactive on their behalf to leave a back door or a trick door open in the case that they will continue to do the many things that they've done in the past, which is shenanigans. Right. Mm. And here we are with these shenanigans uh, we already know Christian Horner at the beginning of the season was already trying to chirp and be a squeaky wheel to get greased on the cost cap being raised. Yep. Why was he, why would he do that? Yeah. Yep. Some people say, well, he clearly obvious was just observing the, the economy and the inflation <laughs> of shipping costs, or he clearly obviously knew that they themselves always spent while he was trying to include all major teams. He mm-hmm. said all major teams, I'm sure will breach the cost cap. Well, you was wrong. You were the major team to breach the cost cap. Meanwhile, we have Williams. We already know procedural breach, 25,000 euros or pounds they had. Yeah, to pay. yeah. Then we got Aston Martin procedural breach. You're the only team out of the three that has a minor breach, okay? The other seven teams, 
including major teams, Mercedes, McLaren, all of, they not yeah. they're not in trouble right now. They are. Yeah. And and then I debate even if they are in trouble. Because now we're sitting here on our on our hands waiting. Originally, you were supposed to give it Wednesday before the Japanese GP, yeah. right? So you held off. And it didn't look good that you held off because it was already out there like, okay, why are they trying to protect the weekend that they were so building up for? Rightfully so, Honda trying to build up. They're trying to capitalize on marketing. Yeah. Yes, clinches the championship early, Japanese Grand Prix. It looked good for Honda. Set a Honda track. I get you. I feel you. I'm not hitting yeah. you on yet. <laughs> but then it didn't really happen because the weather didn't cooperate. So then we run into the fact that Max is not going to get it early because the points slide. Well, Charles left the back door open for them to do some more shenanigans. We never seen them like enforce a penalty that quick in the cool down room. They're going to give Charles five second penalty, which slides him back. And then that gives Max a championship. Max is like, oh, it's for real, it's for real. Yeah, sit in this chair we got sitting up here for you, Max. And now all of a sudden, now it's looking not so good because it's okay. Y'all didn't want to let this news come out because you already knew it was Red Bull. It wasn't speculated. It was factual. Mm -hmm. But now here we come Monday, we get it factual. And here we are a whole week later, still nothing. What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for? I already told you I had summoned. I had I had already petitioned and put out a summons and a warrant out for the Red Bull financial books. And I had it on my channel. I had the 2021 cookbook on my channel. Where we <laughs> cooked all the books. I'm telling y'all, if if FIA can't do it, call yeah. Wolfpack. I'll go, I'll go arrest them boys. I'll, I'll, I'll snatch them up for you. So yeah, I think <laughs> it's a bunch of bullshit right now. No, look, Jay, you are not only are you preaching, but you are preaching to the choir, and the choir says amen because I'm almost. This is what happens when you see injustices in the world too much, right? right? When you're on your phone and we see things that happen in the world that are awful, we see, you know, and I'm not equating this to that, right? But we see right. bad things on our phone, like wars, injustices, poverty, all of these things, right? And we get, in, like, not, uh, we get desensitized to it. Right. On a smaller scale, and a less grander scale in terms of what we're talking about in the world. But F1 fans, I genuinely think, right? F1 fans have been desensitized to the fuckeries that's going on in this sport. Like, like I honestly, yeah, because any other sport, right? I keep saying this, it's too much of a coincidence. Right. It's too much of a coincidence that every other penalty, we're looking at penalties, we're looking at penalties. You look at Sergio Perez, what he did at Silverstone at the chicane in keeping his uh. place, right? And the FIA, I, can't, I think during the race, maybe they decided during the race, or maybe they decided after, but they decided that was not a penalty. Right. Fine. Two weeks ago in Singapore, or three weeks ago, we had a situation where Sergio Perez did three different safety car violations and they let him get away with it because of the rain, essentially, right? right. They gave him a reprimand or oh, five second penalty. No, they gave him five second five penalty. Five seconds, which was enough right. for him to win the race. But they That's waited it. until after the they race. They went until after because they wanted to speak to mm. him, right? They wanted to mm. speak to him. Yeah. We then get to that time. Yeah, right? Okay. We then get to Japan. Charles, uh, Charles Leclerc does something pretty similar to what Perez did in Silverstone in the rain. So it's harder for him to stop, which is a mitigating circumstance which you've right. allowed Perez to get away with. They didn't even want to talk to him to say, what was the reason why you cut that chicane? Right. They wanted that title wrapped up on the podium. They didn't want a repeat of what happened in Abu Dhabi. They right. wanted it wrapped up. Our good friend Cameron, and look, I'm not wanting to say that I'm stealing from our friend here because he's more articulate and, and a better F1 product creator than right. I am. But I'm going to say that he had a very good point in his latest video. F1 is entertainment, WWE, and he always says the same thing. Michael mm. Massey settings, play as you go, making it up as you go along. It's imprinted in my brain. Mm -hmm. This sport is making it up as it goes along, and we're getting to this cost cap thing. It is unheard of. Why is it taking a week with no end in sight for knowing, A, 
How much did they overspend by? B, Thank you. what did they overspend on? C, how did that impact on their championship win last wow. season? D, what the fuck are you going to do to these men? Right. What is the punishment? And Maybe we're all both. here. Like, we're all here. We're all speculating as a sport. We should not be speculating on what should happen. They should, they breached it. We should know right now. Bang. Right now. Punishment. So I guess for you, what, I've seen you've been sending around a uh, petition, petition, helping to share share a petition. And we've signed it and we'll put a link to it under here, right? shout out. I want you, I guess from your point of view, and maybe you guys are the ones who are not desensitized, right? You guys are the ones who are looking at this and looking, you know what, this is injustice. We need to, we need to do something about this. Right. But what is it that has so, I guess, explain what's in the petition because we're talking about punishment. Okay. And explain, I guess, for you why it's so important for that petition to be heard facts so first i'm going to tell people like petitions in this genre in this area don't work like legal petitions right so like when you're going up congress government so many signatures it becomes a legal document it carries more weight and recognition even on the smallest 100 signees on a petition can create a legal document type this is not the same thing so basically what happened is jay from wolfpack i'm about action so mm-hmm. if you run your bumping your gums too damn much, you bumping, you bumping. Okay, I'm like, well, listen, y'all want the opportunity. There's this energy out there that everybody, a lot of people, not everybody, a lot of people feel like this is wrong, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I tell you what, I'm going to put this damn vessel together. I'm going to put this car together. Anybody that want to jump in the car, go somewhere, let your energy hopefully propel you in a better direction because you can comment on Twitter all day. They don't give a damn. Mm-hmm. You can comment on YouTube. I give a damn, I'm going to respond, but they don't see that. So the only thing I did was put a vessel together that would potentially or possibly be recognized. And like I told people, temper your expectations. Really, the most we can get out of this at this stage right now is what we're looking for. Does another platform or a journalist platform pick it up and say there's a petition out there, but you need those signatures. I told people, if you're not about it, it's not going to happen. We need more than two, three thousand. You got to get it up. But don't say yeah. Wolfpack didn't give you an opportunity. And I'm also going to say this for people out there. They came to my door. Really, you didn't come to the door. You came to the curb because I think you know better than to come to the door. (laughs) And hurled all your little, you know, grow up. You're stupid. Hey, I'm telling you, I don't care how many. Fuck you. That's straight up, (laughs) straight up. Because you don't do anything. Either way, the ball rolls. The best thing you do is troll. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what you do. That's not what I'm about. I want to let people know. And I told people this. It's only Red Bull is at the center of this, but it's bigger than Red Bull. Yeah. People are going to say it's a Mercedes Red Bull thing. They're just the variables and the ingredients in it this time. What about the crash gate situation with Alonzo mm. and PK? Yeah. What about the situation between Senna and Prost? If any point in time you've been watching Formula One and you've seen something that happened via the FIA and you did not agree with it because it was utterly and obviously criminally wrong, mm. you signed a petition. You sign a position to do something besides gripe and sit in the back room and sit in the comment section. I just wanted to give you all a place to put that energy to hopefully get something done. But I'm saying that at this point, this is my boiling over point. This is getting ridiculous. Yeah. This is two situations now discovered in 2021 where something's been done incorrectly. The scandal obviously was done incorrectly. Max shouldn't have a championship anyway. Yeah, I don't want to hear all the bullshit about, oh, well, he won this amount. Yeah, but listen, when they went into Abu Dhabi, they were zero zero the points was even period point blank period yeah. max was getting his ass beat 10 to 14 seconds point blank period had you cannot say yes to this question and i ask it all the time and nobody can say yes if it were not for the mishandling and the breaking of the rules by massey jointly motivated by red bull is max a champion in 2021 hell no it was obviously wrong. They fired a man and NDA'd him because so. So why didn't we see a reverse on the championship? Yeah. All wow. right. So now here we come with this cost cap situation. Yeah. 21. Again, are we going to see these points? And like I told people, you need more than eight points. And watch out for this. And I, I'm telling you, if they dock max points, 
If it's eight, it's going to show you. They already know what they just want to do something, but they don't really want to do nothing. They want to keep the golden boy up there. They're so quick to want to change the face of Formula One. They're willing to do whatever inappropriately, no matter how short or over undercoming it is, to do so. It's, it should be reversed. But the petitions out there, you want to sign and sign it. It's just another avenue for you to take more action and running and bumping your gums. And like I told people, keep the same energy you see me. The world is not as big as you think. When you cross paths, you got to go ahead and make sure you do that. Look, I it, I think it sums up internet culture brilliantly that people would darken your doors with trolling. Like, Thanks. Like, Thanks. Like, you are the last person I want to get on the wrong side of at all. And, uh, and it's also like... A situation where it's easy to sit on the sidelines and poo-poo what people are doing, right? right? It's easy for you to sit behind a faceless profile picture on the internet. You don't show your face and that's fine. You want to stay private. Everyone has right. the right to privacy in their life, right? But it's easy for you to sit behind a computer and poo-poo the efforts of what other people are doing what do you actually do yourself? When do you put yourself on the line? When do you put yourself out there? When do you make yourself yeah. vulnerable? When do, you, when do you make art or content for people to critique and shout down at you? You couldn't live a day in our shoes. Right. Facts. You could not receive the comments we receive. You could not receive the hate we receive. And go about your day. And you know what? Just... <laughs> Dust this mic off and go again week after week after week because Facts. you're weak. Facts. So don't even try and come at Jay for starting a petition, for creating Facts. action. Because you know what? They laughed at Team LH all the way through winter for all the hashtags. They said, oh, it's just a fucking hashtag. You lot are making hashtags. The hashtags aren't going to do anything. But what does that do? At the end of the day, we are in the age of conversation. Right. Okay. When conversation is what... Shout out to Team LH. Shout out to Team LH. Conversation is what is ruling uh, social media right now, right? right? If you're able to create conversation, that is social capital, right? So if I... You think me, you think Quicksop F1, look at our YouTube numbers, look at the Instagram numbers, look whatever you want. Do you think that we're getting interviews in in Vanity Fair, in Nylon? Do you think we're getting shout outs by Beats from Dre the other day? Do you think we're getting all of these things because we've got numbers? It's not. It's because we're able to create conversation and it creates social capital. We were able to get something out of the FIA because of social capital that is conversation and i think the more things that drive that the more we'll be able to hold these people accountable and i think right. that's the issue right now that right. i can see jay is that i don't feel that the fia are being held to account in any way and we're looking right. look give a man an inch he'll take a mile okay <sighs> And and I feel like the FA have seen that they've got away with something last year. And I honestly, we're looking at the same thing that's happened. A scandal has come out. They delayed the report. They're now delaying the outcome. Well, yeah, it's know. the same thing again. And they're allowed to do it without, with impunity. So, Jay, I guess for you, you're you're asking for a stripping of Max's championship. And yeah, that's, definitely. That's on the drivers. Definitely, that's on the drivers. So. Let me let me ask you this: yeah. Is 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 F one Formula One not considered the pinnacle of all motorsports? One hundred percent. One hundred percent, right? Okay, so it would just be so fitting that in the lieu of this whole debacle, the Haas team, their basically their originating parent. Stuart Haas and NASCAR just got hit with a hefty penalty and fine. The mm. crew chief. Now, all of this was done. I, well, I'm about to list what happened to him. All Please do. Done. Could you explain as well what, yes. like, explain the whole thing? Because I think this is going to be some really interesting shit. Definitely. So, Stuart Haas, which is the origination of where you have the Haas Formula One team, okay? Mm. They're in NASCAR. They got penalized. The car got taken back to the research and development department. 
found out they modified a part, all right? Mm -hmm. So in, in the aviation, we'd be called subs, suspect unapproved parts. Uh, okay. The crew chief himself, before we even get to the team, the crew chief himself got suspended for four competitions and fined a hundred thousand dollars. Personally, so peace part modification on peace part. Four competitions he's suspended for a hundred thousand dollars. He's fine. The team was docked one hundred points. So if you're going to tell me, and I know many of y'all say it because y'all come to my front door telling me I'm black, stay out of Formula One, I'm American, stay out of Formula One, uh, go watch NASCAR, stay out of Formula One. So you mean to tell me uh, a, a generation and team and sport that you consider to be lower than the Formula One, all God mighty sport, is conducting themselves in a better fashion than you are? Mm. Are you mean to tell me that you're going to see NASCAR lead by example in a connection to a Haas Formula One team being penalized by a peace part? And you mean to tell me somebody's going to breach the cost cap? Now, a lot of people are like, oh, it's only 5%. I don't know if you pass regular math. <laughs> 45 million, 5% is 7.25 million. If you're talking about that ain't a much, I need to see your pay stub so I can I can say you qualified to say 7.25 <laughs> million is not a much. 7.25 million can change the trajectory of a team's points and championship outcome. Now, I'm, yeah. not say, I'm not saying it's 7.25 million, but I'm saying any money spent over than what you are supposed to spend in a competitive season needs to be penalized as so. And as we've seen in NASCAR, modifying a damn piece part costs the crew chief 100 grand for a championship to four competitions in a championship season and cost the team a hundred damn points. I don't want to see nothing less than that. If, for, if Formula One supposed to be that shit, I don't want to see nothing less than that. I'm just saying, don't bring it to the, don't bring it. Don't I bring think it. what I also want to bring to people's door is this. I think Lewis Hamilton came out and said a new floor is like $300,000. Right. And if they had a new floor last year, Mm -hmm. they would have not been in the situation that they were in for so long. Let's right. take it back to last season. Please do. Because some of you mm. want to talk without context. Mm. So I'm going to bring context to you right now. Beginning of the season, Red Bull were churning out update after update after update. I will never forget this day in the rest of my life. I will be on my deathbed and someone say, Nyasha, what is your most memorized Toto Wolf <laughs> interview? And I will say, Ted Kravitz, Monaco, P1. Ted Kravitz says, Toto, Red Bull are bringing X, Y, Z. What are you guys bringing? Right. Toto Wolf says, Ted we're not bringing fuck all. <laughs> We're not developing the car. Ted, Ted looks at him with a look of bemusement. The same way if I said to you, I've cooked you Christmas dinner, and you say, Nash, where's the gravy? I say, brother, there's no gravy. Eat that shit dry. You're looking at me like I'm a madman. That's what. Hell yeah. Of course you are. Thanksgiving's coming up, no? Yeah. Imagine Shit. if there's no gravy in your Thanksgiving. You're looking at me like, we're about to throw hands right now. Fuck right? yeah. Like, what's going on? So Ted looks at him like he's crazy. And, and Toto says, we're not developing this car. Some people took it as, well, they've got the tokens. They're saving tokens. What's going on here? Right. Toto, wish they did. Wish they did. They did save tokens, but mm. they were also aware of a fucking cost cap. And oh. in a cost cap era, let's think back to Ferrari Mercedes title fights, 2017, 2018, mm -hmm. taking away Seb Vettel's absolute incompetence in the second half of 2018. And I say that with my chest. Wow. What did mercedes do they outdeveloped ferrari they were bringing right. new parts constantly why because there was no cost cap and they could just bring parts bring parts bring parts and they right. won the development war last season we saw a change from mercedes all of a sudden we need to understand the car it's better mm -hmm. for us to understand rather than just bring updates and do you not think they wanted to just chuck new parts of that car week after week? They're, they're right. training Red Bull. Remember Max Verstappen's doing 
burnouts on the line in Austria. Right. We had to wait till Silverstone to get one big upgrade. Now, without a cost cap, they're bringing upgrades every week. They couldn't do that. It is if Red Bull broke the cost cap, make no mistake, it had an effect on the pace of their car, which won them the title. Right. That Not on is, chicken wings. That is it. That is it. So for me, I think it's cheating. Jay, oh, we had a discussion about this on our podcast. I We had a discussion about performance enhancing drugs. Oh, we are. Yeah, PEDs. What's um, up? Two there seconds. My headphones are... I'm going to... There you go. So, yes. Yes, back. So, Jay, we had a conversation about performance enhancing drugs. Right. Um, I'm not going to bring that conversation here because... I fundamentally disagree with it, but <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. I fundamentally you disagree. Sign. Yeah. Like, so, but what, so I guess what I will say to you is as someone who's been in competitions against, um, people who are on performance enhancing drugs and maybe you right. are not right? Right, 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 right. Why? There you go. No, tell us what that is. So Jay's just showed me a lovely looking no, trophy. So hey, what's boy, that? But it's a stage for men's physique. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so, nice. you know, I do that. I do that thing for real. You, know you do, right? Jay, for those who don't know, for those who are listening, yeah, you know, uh, these are all there. trophies right there. Drag so are there, is, that, is that all that, all that is? This is a drag racing trophy. Oh, uh, nice. When I participate in drag racing, these are also bodybuilding trophies. Nice. Uh, this is car trophy. So, yeah, I've been, I'm, I'm competitive. You're competitive, yeah. right? Yeah, right? Yeah. So, how, as a competitor, mm-hmm. How bad is it for nine competitors to be playing fair and then one competitor to be proven to be playing unfair and that particular competitor win? Mm, It's an uproar. (laughs) Like, literally. Like, I don't even know if you've seen the latest viral video of the fishing tournament. Bass fishing tournament. I watch bass fishing, all right? But when you get a chance... Everybody, go look up this video. Okay, a, link and me and I'll put it in the podcast. Put it in the pod. This is what the rest of the nine teams need to be like in response to Red Bull breaching the cost cap. These fishermen come in the way they're fish, and it is found the judge cuts the fish open, and there are lead weights in the fish. The, no. the competitors up, I mean, they're talking about calling police, arrest them. It's an uproar. That's what it's like. If I'm backstage and I go up, to compete, and then I'm back there before we go for damn finals to get the names called, and I find out that this dude has been juicing after we get awarded. Oh, I'm pissed. But yeah. see, unlike the Formula One, what happens is he gets stripped, whoever came yeah. in seconds gets first, and he's bounced. Yeah. See, I've seen the credibility and the integrity happen several times. It's just funny that it often fails in Formula One, and that's what's odd. We're not going for that shit. And trust me, I've seen it several times. In my in the division that I was in, you could literally go to a competition, not be competing. You could just be there to be a spectator. If they see you there, they can pull you out of the audience while you're watching a competition to test you on off season. It, so why is it that we having these pitfalls in Formula One, the most elite motorsport, supposed to be all oh, a billion dollar boys play club? Or maybe that's the problem. Mm. Maybe, that's the problem. maybe because to get to a billion dollars, there's a lot of shit in heads you got to cut. A lot of people you got to drop off in that damn Kraken's pot. Maybe that's the problem because the internal core of Formula One is indeed spoiled. Right, yes. maybe, and that's maybe that's no, why I'm actually you're not so cool with it because he's indeed used to shit being given to him. Because well, me, somebody like me, last season put me in Max's situation. Was I'm telling you on the podium, they gonna warn me with that. I'm telling you straight up, this ain't how this ain't how I want to do you know, this. Do you know when like do you ever watch snooker or pool? Like, you ever seen like pool? No. Okay, that's fine, but I'm trying to think, oh, tennis. You nope, ever watch gotcha. tennis? Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. You ever watch tennis and um someone hits a shot and mm-hmm. it might hit the net and mm-hmm. then bounce awkwardly right. and and it, they get the point. You know that they hold their hands up and they're like I'm sorry. Like I'm, during, 
Joe, I'm sorry. Like I, I accept that. It's and look, <laughs> Max fans are gonna hate this podcast, but you hate it anyway. And I, yeah, fuck them. And I don't care. They hate. Them. They love to hate it. They love to hate, it, and that's fine. And, and you know, you're you're literally making me money. Please do it. <laughs> like, love it. like I love, love it. it. I get that YouTube AdSense check in the mail. Facts. It makes me so Thank happy. You. Thank you. But um, what I would say is that. I don't want to get too much into Max's character. I got you. Because, you know, I got you. But I do think it says something that he's never really said it was wrong. What happened? Right. Like, do you know what I mean? I think it would be a lot more acceptable if he just said, look, I felt like I, I did well over the course of the season and mm-hmm. I felt, True. you know, and I'm happy that I've achieved a lifelong dream. This isn't the way that I would want it to happen. Lewis is the deserver champion. However, look, these are the results and I just have to move on with my life. But if there was some sort of like, and this is why when people are telling me, we've seen a new mature Max this year. Max is the most mature guy. I don't believe it. I honestly don't. I've not seen one (laughs) ounce of contrition from Max. And we saw it in Singapore in qualifying. That old Max came out very oh, quickly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That came out very quickly. So I, I'm not seeing this new... I'm seeing a Max in a car, which is a second a lap quicker than everyone else. I would right. be chilling. No pressure. No pressure. I'd be chilling if that was me. But anyway, I do want to read you because this is on the same thing that we were talking about. So what I'm going to do now is read... Um. An article, a letter from Zach Brown. Okay. And I'm going to. Oh, yeah, yeah, hell yeah. McLaren, big shout out to McLaren. So, McLaren have come out, right? For those who don't know, Zach Brown, um, who is the uh, team principal of uh, McLaren F1, um, has come out with a letter, an open letter to the FIA, essentially um, saying that. He's expressing his views on the cross-cap bridge, right? Right. So what he does say, uh, the overspend bridge and possibly the procedural breaches constitute cheating by offering a significant advantage across technical, sporting, and financial regulation. The FAA has run an extremely thorough, collaborative, and open process. We have even been given a one-year dress rehearsal in 2020 with ample opportunity to seek any clarification if details were unclear so there is no reason for any team to now say they are surprised the bottom line is Mm -hmm. any team who has overspent has gained an unfair advantage both in the current and following years car development red bull have just won the title with four races to spare by the way right so we don't feel financial penalty alone would be a suitable penalty. Uh, there clearly needs to be a sporting penalty in these instances, as determined by the FIA. Uh, we uh, suggest that overspend be penalised by way of reduction to the team's cost cap in the year. The following ruling: the penalty should be equal to overspend plus a further fine, uh, and therefore, 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 wind tunnel time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm-hmm. That is strong stuff from Zach right. Brown. Right. Stronger, like stronger than stronger than we heard from uh Bonotto who who was claiming he want to see a stiff and harsh penalty. I ain't really heard nothing like that from him. I've not heard anything for before I be capping. Y'all for I, real. I know if I'm look, <laughs> I don't doubt that at all for I be capping. I think Toto Wolf has been I think he's been strong on it, mm-hmm. but I would like him. I would like Toto Wolf to apply that pressure. I'm Big not pressure. gonna lie. I don't feel like the pressure is enough. Mm-hmm. I still think it's too, it's too political. It's too, you know, when they said to him, do you think Red Bull should be stripped of the championship? He says, no, that's not. And I'm like, hell well, yeah. You should be asking for the maximum possible penalty. But anyway. They should be stripped like dances is $5. Can you imagine how many people stripping in this club for $5 dances? That shit costs 20 bucks a piece, man. $5? Oh shit, I'm living it up. Oh my God. Flip. 
Yeah. Well, look, take me to those places, please. And nah, uh, a gunshot and all types of stuff. Uh, well, Twenty dollars keeps you safe. <laughs> Five dollar lap dance is gonna might cost you your life. Twenty dollar lap dance is different demographic. In it. Yeah, okay, like, cool. Twenty dollars. Okay, got let me you. got let you. Me, take me to the twenty dollar places. Yeah. Twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. I, wanna, I don't want to risk my life over that. Right, time, right, so right. I, do it. I mean, I might want it, but okay. So, <laughs> but I guess thoughts on because that's that's big, right? Let's not right. make any mistake for Zach Brown to come out and say that as a team principal and as a team principal. Not from the big, big three, right? Although right, you currently. could argue they're the fourth biggest team, right? Right, but, there you go. Um, but I guess thoughts on that because that is that is a big. I think I think it's I think it's good, right? Because most people are looking at McLaren like they looking at the other teams like it don't even affect you. If you're not Ferrari, Mercedes, they're thinking like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. No, Zach Brown is saying that. Listen. I don't care where I am right now in the championship points of the standings. I don't care if people think we've underachieved in this new era of the regulations, given what we did in 2021. What I do care about is the fact that something has been found to be wrong. Another team has taken an unfair advantage amongst the grid and they need to be penalized for it. Period. Mm, yeah. Period. They need to be penalized for it. And for him to come out, put his face on it, put a stamp on it, I commend Zach Brown for that. Now, I'm not going to say in other situations, maybe y'all disagree with something he's done. Maybe I don't like the Piastri situation, whatever the case is. I like the Piastri situation. I like any situation that kind of gives power, takes a little bit of power away from the machine, gives power to the people that are participating in it and the people that are watching it. Real and that cool. Piastri situation provided more power toward the drivers on negotiation and showing you that things can indeed happen, all right? So, is Zach Brown, big shout out to him and McLaren for taking that stance. I would like to see, this is, we have the same situation. On the onset of these things happening, like Abu Dhabi, at first, Rick, Danny Rick, like, I don't know what's going on, but I don't want to be involved in that. Like, yeah. everything is something's wrong. A lot yeah. of wrong, but then following that, it's all, shh, don't say shit to nobody. You quiet. Yeah. Mm. What Zach Brown did, the other team principals need to do. Because like yeah. I told people about this yeah. petition, we're, I'm really talking about the integrity of Formula One in the future. Yeah. Like future drivers, yeah. other team developments. We don't want to see this happen to them, period. I don't know yeah. who these drivers are. I don't know who's coming. All I know is I don't want to see somebody who has rightfully earned the respect, the points, the position be totally swindled by you know, a corruption do, within the sport. Do you know what the thing is? And I do want to just get onto that passion because I think that's a really good conversation. I think a lot of people think because Lewis is a seven time world champion, they think it's okay what happened. You've got seven. Max said this shit. Yeah, he's got seven. Like, he'll be okay, right? This is my first, whatever. It's Max's first. Lewis. So, but one, Lewis was on the verge of creating history and being the most dominant driver without question. So, I don't even want to get into that. What up? But imagine it's Ugo in a in a big, in a, big, big, big yeah, F4 champion. Congratulations champion. to Ugo. We'll see you in F3 next year. Thanks. Imagine it's Ugo mm -hmm. for his first mm -hmm. and something happens, right? And I was, I'm saying Ugo because I'm personally connected to that. But imagine it's your favorite driver. Imagine right. it's Verstappen. It won't be. But imagine it's Verstappen. Right. That gets fucked by an incompetent organization. Right. Ferrari is seeing it now. If they didn't know, then Japan would have showed them. And out of everyone who should be making the most noise, banging down on the door of the FIA, I don't understand how Ferrari are not applying pressure every day of the week. Facts. You guys have just lost the title to a car that all of a sudden after the summer break is like four a to rocket. seven tenths quicker a lap than you. And you don't think that cost cap regulation breach from last season hasn't affected it this season. Right. And you've just lost the title. Your guy has lost the second place in the steward's room. They didn't even let him come up and discuss it. Right. Even though it happened right. on the last lap. Last. 
the last corner of the last lap. They couldn't even say, you know what, don't go to the cool down room, just come up. We'll delay right. the podium, whatever. I just find it incredible that people can't see. And I think because of A, the fact that Lewis is black, a lot of Lewis Lewis's fans are black. Right. The success that he's had in the sport, people think that we're whining because because we we've lost out. Right. And a lot of Max fans that aren't black are progressive. Yeah. They're fans that believe in equality. And those who aren't used to equality feel like it's unequal and unfair to them. Yeah. No, 100%. Right. When, and I I get it. Look, (laughs) I live in Britain. Okay. We've got poor white people. And in America as well, we've just seen Trump. Are the most disenfranchised political group, and, right. Right. and if you don't think that trickles down to Formula One, where mm. you've had to watch a black guy win the whole time, and you've had to look at Black Lives Matter stuff, and you've had to look at diversity programs, and then right. all of a sudden you're trying to tell me that you don't feel disenfranchised when all of a sudden empowered when your great white hope wins the title. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> What no. I'm going to say is this. It's not about Lewis. It's right. about a sport that we love. I love this sport as much as you do, Max fan. I love this sport as much as you do, science fan, Leclerc fan. Right. Fucking whatever fan. We right. love the sport and the competitive nature of the sport. And we cannot keep having an organization who are completely hellbent on essentially removing the sporting element and having the political element be the most prevalent thing in the sport. And that's, right. that's just my thoughts on it. I, I just uh, think that's a good thought. Because you think you think well, brother. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. Wow, that's well, that's that, put it that, very nicely too. That's me. that's a really nice compliment. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so uh, there was other stuff I wanted to talk about, but you know what? Oh, yeah, yeah. What's quickly, up? I do okay. want to touch on this. We haven't really spoken about the Piastri thing, and I know it's old news now, and we've got right. other drivers in other places. But right. what I will say is this: Do you think that the F one merry go round this season was a sign of? power shifting slightly to drivers right we had a driver who was offered a contract and retired with one day notice facts we then had another driver who was being offered a one-year contract go to another team in the middle of the night in the middle of the night whilst he was on holiday for a two-year contract right we then had another youth team prospect reject the contract from his uh sponsors who have sponsored him through youth level to right. go for another team on the paddock again for a, i think a multi-year contract I think right while they was going to try to hold him well, out that well they were yeah well they were potentially looking to loan him out to another team because they wanted to keep this other guy on a one-year contract i mean all right. of this really involves one or two right. teams but I guess we look at that. Mm -hmm. We look. uh, I'm trying to think. Really, I guess. I mean, yeah. We look. We seen Latifi finally get uh, shit on by somebody who came off the couch playing. Damn, was in the sim and got the call and came and said, "Let me show you what I can do with that." Exactly. Thank God. Right. Right. Latifi's gone. So, really, the last true pay driver i think on the grid i think you can make a case for all 19 drivers well you might make a little case for mick gonna show but um you might make a light case for me but that's more like a namesake that's a name that's more like a namesake that's a namesake i think i think we're saying like purely lack of money money is keeping you here right right do you think we're going to see i guess i'm a long way of putting this is do F1 drivers have more power now in contract negotiations or is it entirely dependent on, I guess, who you are, where you are and where you're going? Because the Piastri situation, okay, I'll level it with this. That was Land- purely driver. Uh, yeah. To me, Piastri was purely driver. Yeah, right. I'll level it with this. Lando has a five-year contract. Right. 
he just came out in an interview and said he's not expecting to win until 24 25. Mm-hmm. Leclerc is in a four or five year contract, right? Mm-hmm. Verstappen's locked in 2028. 20, yeah, right? Mm-hmm. We're not going to see much movement from those four. Nah. Right? We're nah. almost in a situation maybe. I guess we're in an NFL quarterback situation. Right. Is right. that does that kind of yeah, that's all about right. That's a good one. Yeah. Like where people are locked in for contracts and it's rare to get a free agent like or a Deshaun trade. Watson. Like like Deshaun Watson or like a right. trade like Russell Wilson to, to right, the Broncos, right. right? That's a rare thing. Rare occasion. Right. So I guess as a landscape. I guess it would. It must. It's good to see the Piastri Alonso situation where drivers had a bit more control over where they could and, and couldn't go. I guess. Right. Do you agree? I do agree. Yeah, I do agree. I definitely put Piastri at the top of that. Yeah. Uh, Alonso, I don't know so much because he was already in the kind of a negotiation. He just didn't like the one with the conditional one. Cause that's really what yeah. it was. And I think that's something else that pissed Piastri off. If you say that I'm your future and you so-called invested this much and we had a conversation, I think all together might've been around 20% of is what that team was contributed to Piastri's development. Right. But if you say I'm that guy, you say I'm the one, why are you offering somebody who is definitely not gonna, you're, his ceiling has been reached and he's falling from that ceiling like a helium balloon in a cold weather, <laughs> just constantly dropping, all yeah. right? Why would you go to him, tell him one, with the conditions that if you do this, we'll give you another one. So it's yeah. telling me, you gonna put me off for two years and then hold me out to another team on a condition that I might not even sit number one seat for like three, three or four years, depending on what you want to do. Yeah. So I think uh, Piastri, I think that's an awesome situation. I yeah. like the way he came out on social media. I think they tried to bully him into whatever the situation was by saying, hey, we on social media and didn't think that Piastri was going to come out. And Piastri showed him that, yo, I'm telling you, they heavy down there. I'm going <laughs> to drop them on the table. <laughs> they said, no, 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 no. So I think that was a good situation. Uh, I think DeVries was trying to play a little po- political stunt where... Mm. Um, he was like, I don't have, I think it was bad when he said that. When DeVries came out and said, I don't have any control about where I go. I think not only one was it misleading, it was bad and counterproductive for driver progression. And three, I think it was bullshit because he knew already where he was going to choose to go. And he knew it was already a bad light on AlphaTauri with Red Bull. So he wanted to put yeah. that out of the air like, hey, I couldn't choose. They, I had to go to AlphaTauri. Although I just drove three Mercedes power unit cars, including a Mercedes, I had to go there. Like, come on, DeVries, you could, you done pretty good, bro. And salute yeah. to you. I hope you're good in your season. I'm wishing you the best you show what's up but yeah i think it damn sure is a driver's power shift and i like it yeah. i like it damn it no for sure i think i more power to drivers and less to corporations right Facts. they're the guys risking their lives they're the ones who've sacrificed large portions of yeah. their lives to make it they should be the ones that the power. and i think that's why i also liked Gasly getting out of the Red Bull situation, mm-hmm. it was time. Like he, yeah. I was scared for Gasly. I'm not going to lie. I was scared because I was like, seats on the grid are filling up. If he doesn't go to Alpine, I, what's left? Williams, really? Right. Haas. And I think he's better than that. And it'll be interesting to see him against Ocon. Well, yeah, I, I, now, now I'm going to tell everybody that's been on the ghastly train and this gas, in my opinion, we've had this conversation. The margin between good and great is very, very small, very minuscule, but in itself shows you abundant amount of gap between the two. You're going to get the opportunity now that you have to play a little bit higher up with the bigger fish. Mm. We're going to see what your fan work is like, Gasly. So we're going to see how you compete in a better car. Now, if you get in there, make no mistake, Ocon finished ahead of damn Alonso in several in several races. So don't act like Ocon is just garbage. He, he made mm. a garbage statement by saying he thought he was Alonso's best teammate outside of damn Hamilton. Yeah. I mean, he, went, he jumped out on the, he jumped out the window on that one. <laughs> Ocon on that one. But if Gasly gets there and he doesn't outperform Ocon, oh, oh, it's an indictment. You done. You done. You I backsliding. Did. All that butt kissing you did trying to get back in that Red Bull seat. You done, period. If you get there and you do not perform against Ocon or even to the level, oh, bro, 
Oh yeah, you ain't even Alpha Tar. You can skip that. Don't co- don't pass go. Don't collect the hundred. <laughs> you might be lucky if you catch Hasa Williams on your way falling to hell. Just trying to tell. You. No, I look Jay. I I couldn't agree with you more. I everyone knows on this podcast. Yeah, I've always rated Esteban Ocon. I think he is a great talent. I like his story as well. Facts. Very humble upbringing. Facts. We had to fight for every single thing that he's got in F1. He took a year out. Not a lot of people can take a year out, come back, and he's hung on by the skin of his teeth. He has yep. really hung on to that seat because, you know, I think really that beginning of last season when he was on fire and obviously getting the race win, he got that contract, I think before the race win actually, but then he got the contract. Um, and I think since he knows he's got that security, I think he's just gone on levels and levels and levels. Of, and right. He's, he's a constant, you can see he's always improving. There you go, the constant growth. Always. It's not like... It's not like you're seeing dramatic growth, but it's right. small it's incremental. incremental. And that's all you need, right? That's 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 what you'd rather have, right? Just right. constantly raising the tide uh and, and oh, getting yeah. higher. Look, um lastly, I wanna ask you something, Jay. All right. Um there's people who are listening to this. Mm-hmm. You know, actually no, before I start, personally one of the most enriching things that has happened to me as a content creator is meeting you uh, and meeting Cam for sure, um, both of you. Um, and I, I, what I would say is that it's been inspiring watching. We thought, I thought I was on my own in this thing, or not I, as a product, we were on our own. Right. As like fearless content creators, right? And I I see what you're doing. I see the growth that you've had. I see the community that you've got as well. I think it's I think it's incredible. Wow. What I guess for you, I know I ask this a lot, but for you, right, as a black F1 content creator, mm-hmm. um, a what advice would you have? to anyone doing something creative or anyone looking to progress at work, looking to progress like creatively, artistically or whatever, like, because I just think you've got some words of wisdom that I think could inspire a lot of people who listen to this podcast. There's some people who might be looking to start their own F1 podcast. Some people might be looking to start their own whatever youtube channel they might be looking to like progress at work and you know impress their boss and you know build their career so i guess like what advice would you have for for those people uh, i'm gonna say that first i'm gonna lead off and say say two things those who can do mm. those who can't talk about those who can mm. all right another thing is you can copy the style but you can't copy respect You have to be true to who you are first and you have to believe and be passionate about what you're going to do next. Yeah. Don't let, and this is not to, to, to this way or, or, you know, tell you not to do it. Don't let what you see me and Nasha with quick stop Jay Wolfpack, Wolfpack performance cam F1. Don't let that make you feel like it's easy. It's not. Nothing good worth having is easy and anything that come easy, probably not worth having. You got to understand it's a constant grind. I had to tell my community a lot of times I wake up at 4 a.m. Boom, I'll be on it before I even see y'all. You got to be willing. You have to understand that you got to be willing to work a hundred times more for yourself to build something than you work going and clocking in for somebody else's dream. Because every day you clock into somebody else's business, go sit at somebody else's desk generate somebody else's revenue, you're only building their dream. You're only creating and building their dream. So if you're willing to do that 40 plus hours a week or more, because some of you are working 80 hours, 120 hours, 120 hours every two weeks for somebody else's dream, why the hell won't you do the same for yourself? A lot of people are going to say it's not enough time in a day. Bullshit. It's 24 hours in a day cycle. You go to work for at least eight, maybe 10. That means to tell me there's another 14 hours for you to find and develop your own shit. 
Yeah. And you're not willing to do it if you're not already doing it. You got to be willing to dig deep. You got to be willing to go over time for yourself because eventually if you can create your own revenue, create your own business, create your own platform and get away from somebody else's shout out to them. They built it, but it ain't yours. Every day you wake up will be a better day because working in clocking in will not be like clocking in because your ceiling has now been blown out. When you're yeah. on somebody else's clock, the ceiling's right here. It's right here. And it only moves as they say it moves. But when you're on your own, Ain't no ceiling. You're going to go as far as you propel yourself. So I'm going to tell you, if you want to do something, you better be about that life. Ten toes up, hands in front of your face, and take those hits on the chin and keep going forward. If you're not, hey, there's a sideline and there's a bleacher for a reason. Those that ain't going to start, they sit on the sideline. Those who can't even play, they pay to get tickets and come watch. Those that can't pay the tickets, they sit at home and watch it on the TV. Those who ain't got a TV, they just sit on the couch. Decide where you're going to be and make a commitment to it. That's all I got to say. There you go. Ah! Ah! <laughs> up here. I want to go. No, thank you. I think it's like, it was really important. Like, I think, I think I, we get a lot of questions like, uh, how do you start, how do you start quicker? How do you grow something? And like, I know a lot of people want to grow something, right? And it's like, you've got to really want to do it. Like, we really want to do this shit. I really, I've I've made myself ill over this shit. I've lost right. weight over this shit. I wouldn't recommend that to anyone, by the way. But, I, <laughs> like this, but it's, it's, it's like, um, I just think if you have something that you're passionate about, don't be scared to chase it, right? The scariest right. thing is starting. And once you start, you'll find that the magic is in the process. I have a right. boy who, um, he produced a single for Rihanna. Uh, and that single was on an album, which won a Grammy. So he mm. got like a little Grammy certificate. And he said to me, and I'll never forget this shit. He said, don't ever take for granted that feeling of chasing it because that is the best time because once right. you have it like that's the hardest part right. and that's the most stressful part because now you have it and people want to take it and you've got to keep it and there's expectations and this that. but that beauty and the beauty i think we have in our communities and doing this thing of growing something and building something organic and beautiful so if you if you are all the people who ask us questions <clears throat> about starting a podcast, starting a YouTube channel, doing something, just, just start it and just go for it with all of your might and put everything you can into it because there is always someone who you, you don't want to be by someone who's got less talent than you and works harder than you because that will very much happen. <laughs> it nice. will happen. Look, speaking of talent, Jay, do you mind if I just show off a little bit? Hell no, nah, bro. <laughs> Strut your shit. Do you, some, that. do you want to see something cool? Hell yeah, I do. A lot of people have been asking where the next piece of merch is coming on. You can see me wear the retro yeah. design that we have right oh, here. I like that. It's classic. It's classic, right? It's classic. Very popular in the uh, Quickstop TV. Quickstop TV? I'm confusing my old <laughs> creative endeavor right. with this one, but Quickstop F1 merch store, which is in the comments below we've received the samples for the new lewis hammer and t-shirt for those on youtube you can Dude, see it now shit, raw it's, that's raw it's here bro we've, we've got that's it. raw it's so soft let it hug you let it love you it's so soft it's is so that velvet th it's it might it feels like velvet but it's so thick it's got a it's got a frayed edges as you can see oh, there yes look at the we, character you can see that the oversized yeah a little stone wash we've got Whoa. we've got uh oversized oh on the back if you can see all some of oh. the records that lewis hamilton holds bro y'all killing with that so y'all killing with that that is gonna that's be a, a killer that's a killer that's, that's gonna be available killer. on friday the 21st 
I want to say. Yes, Friday 21st of Sep, no, October. October, this <laughs> that, week, Friday, this week, Friday. Friday this week, that's going to be out. You can get that via quickstopf1.com and you can go into the comments. Jay, I see you've got your own merch as well. And oh, guess, yeah, bro. I guess just quickly, you know what? One minute on for you. Mm-hmm. Why it's important for independent creators to be able to make money off merch and and like donations and subscriptions and, right. and all of that, like oh, real quick, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's a, it, it's the same concept as when people go buy soda or you go buy Coke, you go buy Pepsi, you go buy Gap, you go buy Louis Vuitton, you go buy Red Bottle. It's the same concept, right? You see a product, you like it, you believe in it, so you buy into it because why? You want to look good. You want to feel like you're part of something, but also see the next styles are coming out without you realizing you're, you're participating to its growth. So it's important that people understand that the appreciation and the belief behind, if you see something and you believe in it and you like it and you want it to be around, you have to, you invest in it, right? You invest in it and you're investing into its growth because mm-hmm. you like it. You, you don't have formula one TV, you're not paying that annual fee just because you want to pay annual fee. You're paying an annual fee because you want something that's going to offer you something that you like. That's what we do. We do the same thing. Like I hate when people try to, oh, y'all are not real. Listen, we're different. What we yeah. are is different. What we are is not on the damn reservation. We off. You got to be a little off to be real in this life. We a little off. We a little off. Like it. We a little off, but it's real. We offer something that's different that has not been seen in the Formula One landscape. We're totally different territory, to- totally different. But people gravitate because now there's a platform, there's a personality, there are characteristics that vibe with me. Before I was kind of like just struggling to watch this bland shit. And if you like bland shit, that's fine. It's kind of like that's cooking, like bland food. That's cool. <laughs> you don't know seasoning. That's fine. <laughs> come over here to quick stop. You come to that. You come to that. That's what you're gonna do. So. It's important for that to happen so that we can continue to grow the platform. We can continue to buy equipment. We can continue to improve things for you. Do you think Nasha is going to be able to do live events like that? Like if you like that, you got that. That's what you're, that's what you're investing in. And that's what I let my community know. It's a round table organization. When you were a member at the Wolfpack, yeah. nobody has the edge. There's no head of table. Nobody has the edge. We look and left, we look and right. It's a round situation. And that's what happens when you join a community. So we're we're building new things. And anytime the beginning phases, when you get it out the mud, hey, that's what it takes. So when you all participate and contribute to us, we let you see what you're contributing into. We let yeah. you see what the growth is. And hey, don't treat us any different than you're gonna treat Nike, you're gonna treat Jordan, you're gonna treat Reebok, you're gonna treat Pepsi. Hey, don't, don't, don't slide us like that. Hey, we are yeah. product too, so buy it up. Thank you. thank you so much. And look, I want to say thank you so much to everyone who's ever supported by buying merch, signing up to the Twitch, uh, subscriptions, leaving in donations, even just watching us on YouTube and letting the adverts go. Like we honestly, yes. that that's a big, big help and we really appreciate it. So thank you. And, and even you guys listening on Spotify and Apple, you don't understand when you hear those adverts, you guys are contributing as well. So everyone who listens and watches Quicks of F1, who watches um, Cam F1, watches Wolfpack, watches any of independent Bye. creator, you are helping to grow this sports content so that there are more representative voices. And that is the most important thing. And I think that is a great place to end Bye. the podcast. Jay, it, this has been one of my most favorite chats. I'm not going to lie. We Man, skipped. I loved through. it, bro. We skipped through that, like anyone's business. Jay, where can people find you on social media? You can go Wolfpack Performance on YouTube. YouTube just came out with handles. My handle is still Wolfpack Performance. You can go to the Twitter page, uh, WP underscore performance. You also can go to the Instagram Wolfpack Performance. You know, there I do more of the real car build and stuff like that. Yeah, so no, I've seen that. They ain't into that. They not really in this culture like I've been in it for a minute. So you can go there and see that. Also, you can go to iTunes, check out the car-related music, uh, Wolfpack Performance. You got those two songs up there. So more songs will be coming when I get more time. And there's going to be more things coming and building from not just myself but us. So y'all stay on the lookout.
no for sure look jay thank you so much for that if you guys like jay and i know you do make sure you go support give him a quick follow give him a quick subscription we appreciate that but look i'm out here we're gone you can see us on twitch all this week we've got a show wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday we're streaming all week I believe. <laughs> I need to talk to Mario. Uh, we're streaming all week, I believe, uh, in anticipation, preparation, and observation of the American Grand Prix at Circuit of the Americas. Ooh. I'm sure Jay's got some incredible lined up, uh, content lined up for that. But until then, my name's been Yasha. Look out for the links below for anything you need to see regarding Quick Stop, including as well the petition that Jay has put out regarding. Uh, the FIA's report on the cost cap breach and the punishments that should be handed out. And until the next time I see you, guys, no matter what happens, make sure you keep it on the black stuff. We'll yeah. see you next week. Take care. Look, mate, if you've got this far, clearly you like what we do. So here's a link to subscribe to the Quicks of Pef1 family. Give that a click. And here's another link to some more calls on our channel. Sorry, cool, cool stuff, stuff, stuff. And remember, no matter what happens, keep it on the black stuff. Click the stuff, click the, click the links. Click the, the link, the links. Click the links, there, there, there. <laughs>